What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Zetro's Toxic Vault. I have another great guest inside the vault today. This guy is producer, engineer extraordinaire. I've worked with him on many, many projects, which we'll get into. I would like to welcome to the show, Mr. Juan Ortega. How, How you doing, you? guys? What's up, brother? How are good you? Good to nice see to you, see man. You. Good, good, to good see having you. you in there. Yeah. So like Always I was saying, um, I'm going to do a bunch of different stuff on the vault. I'm going to have different guests. And this is one of the guys I've worked with. He's a specialist, I think, in the heavy metal sound and, and actually getting sound on a record. Um, he's done all three of the Hatriot records that I did. Yep. With an, and the new one with the new my one son. I mixed it yeah and I did the yeah. vocals yeah and, and um we did the Cody Fuentes did the recording of the that's right yeah, yeah. that's right we did the reamping and we did the right. uh, the vocals and basically you were the mastered. mix and master guy exactly. so the final Which the final great, cut was, yeah and then we also job. did the creature feature if any of you guys know creature features is back in the Bay Area Saturday nights coffee TV twenty and creature features TV I did. The I was actually fortunate to do the um, theme song, and I recorded it with Mr. Oh, that was great. That, that was, was so great much fun. fun. <laughs> and and what's great for me is I'm a huge creature feature. And we kept it uh, true fan. to the original, too. and we did. We yeah, just we did. all we did is kind of just crunch in there, little crunch in there, <laughs> but not overly crunchy. And you are an expert in crunch. So tell us how you started in. In recording, but you you were a singer in in, in a Bay Area band before, right? Well, you right? know how it all started was way back when I got out of high school. You know, I I was a metalhead. You know, while my brothers were out there doing sports, I was inside of the house listening to metal and rocking out in front of the mirror with my brother's guitar, and um, I just I just admired them. You know, so I'm like I was I wanted I didn't know if I wanted to be in the music or if I wanted to be you know behind the glass or whatever, but I knew I wanted to be involved somehow. So then later on, I got in my old band, and one thing led to another, and we went and recorded a record. Was or, that Vile? That was Vile, right? No, this right? is way before Vile. This is a band called Zetgeist, you know, beginning band, you know. Uh-huh. So we go to record, and we go to this guy, and we're trying to do the beginnings of extreme metal, you know. We're listening to Morbid Angel and stuff like that, and we wanted to do growls, and we go to this guy, and he just has no idea about you know, metal at all. He has just doesn't know what the hell he's doing. I come up to do my vocals. He's like, what are you doing? Are you like burping in the mic? Oh, I'm like, no. he just has no idea. It was hilarious. You know? So I'm like, no bro. And then, so we're done and he pushes us out of there and I get home and I'm depressed. I'm like, this sucks. This is just not what I wanted it to sound like, you know? So that pushed me into recording. I got into, uh, I got a little eight track task cam and I remember those and started recording my band. You know, I had another band with Colin and this other guy, the drummer, and um, we just, all we did was record. We didn't play any shows or anything. Just record, 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 write, write, write. And then finally we just, that drifted into another band called Vile. So what year are we talking about we're here? Talking about, we're, we're, we're talking about, we're talking about, let's see, 94, 95 was that guy's. And then that summer, um, 96 around there, we started another band called Lords of Chaos, which had uh, Colin, me, which were going to be in Vile, we left and we made Vile together because we wanted, we got better. And, you know, we were, every band we had, we got better and better. And finally, we ended up with Michael Hamilton, who's an Exhumed now, incredible drummer, Deeds of Flesh, Exhumed. He works with Exodus. He's oh, Tom's yeah. drum tech. That's right. I love Mike Hamilton. He's, he's amazing. He's one hell of a person. Those feet alone are And really just to close. have him on the road. And he's a great guy. Oh, my yes. God. He's a road warrior. Sweetheart. Oh, yeah. he's he a road warrior. He knows what to do. Yeah. Oh, love yeah. Mike incredible Hamilton. Incredible musician. So that, love he Mike instantly Hamilton. took us, like, from here to here, like, you know, we're like half sure. pro now. So we got signed. We got a deal. Made Vile. He moved on to Deeds of Flesh. We got another d- drummer. And I we ended up doing like three or four albums. And the whole time, I was just producing and recording. I had gotten ADATs. They had just come out in 96, 94, I think. Something like that. And ADATs were like fresh on the market. They were these digital, really good sounding, you know, affordable you can get eight tracks, and then you can go buy another unit, and then another unit, and then you can have 24, 32 tracks and stack them all together in sync, and you can have a 24-track studio, you know? And I'm like, I did that with my band, and then one day I realized, you know, I got all this gear, you know? Maybe I'll just... I walked around to my studio where everybody, all the other bands, I knocked on the door. I'm like, hey, you guys, want, you guys need to do a demo, man. Really? Yeah, I had wow. little flyers. I made these little flyers. I'm like... <clears throat> Six bucks an hour. Wow. And two bands called me, and I did. No and way. I, yeah, and it was basically they were paying me to learn because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Sure. So from then, it just moved and moved, and I the band got bigger, met more people, started recording more people, 
people in the death metal world, you know, I got a little name though for recording in death metal. And then uh, from then on, it just moved to, I opened up my studio in Pacheco around. And what year was that? That was around 98. Wow. So 21 years you've had trying. Oh, I've been there forever. Yeah. Wow. First it was in a little uh, practice pad. We built two walls to put a little window, oh. you know, and then the drums were shoved in the corner, but it was a little Egg studio. cartons on the wall. or Yeah. You know, carpet to head to toe. Carpet you know? head to toe. <laughs> no high end. Just sucked. Yeah, that sure. high. Yeah, it was terrible. But, uh, and then, so there, yeah, I, I realized, you know, hey, I really love this. I can see myself doing this. Like, you know, I'd be in there for like 18 hours, 15 hours, you know, listening to my favorite records going, how do they make it sound so good? My shit sucks. How do they get it so good, you know? And I got really lucky because I had really good musicians in my area and they were, I was lucky enough to have them trust me and come to my studio and record demos. And Who were one of the, some of the first people that you worked with? Let's that see. Bands like Under, 40 Grit, you know, from the area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had Rob Flynn way, way back. He came in and did a, a Monkeys cover song, uh, Stepping Stone, with, really? with a band called Under. And uh -huh. I met Rob for the first time. And I was like, I remember thinking to myself, wow, Rob Flynn's in my little tiny carpet <laughs> studio recording. And I was blown away. You know, I was like, this is amazing, you know. And then from then I had John Bush who came in and record, helped uh, produce another demo, you know. Not John Bush, excuse me, John Marshall, the guy, the guitar oh, player. Oh, I know John from, quite yeah, well. Yes, yeah. I do. From Metal Church. He was in Metal Church. He actually, when James uh, burned him or injured himself in yep. the 80s, John played the guitar Came part in. when, Jim, when the James. The only other guy that has ever, ever played guitar, yeah, yeah. For, for Metallica. Insane. Yeah, so yeah. I do Really that. cool guy. He came and helped produce this band called Kill Rush that was from our area. So then, you know, I met that. And then I hooked up with Larry Howe. Good friend of mine yeah, sure, from Vicious sure, Rumors. Rumors. He mm -hmm. came in to do a Chastain record, drums, and uh, we became really good friends. And he pushed and he pushed. And one day he's like, hey, man, I want you to do uh, the Vicious record, Vicious Rumors record. I was like, all right. And I met Jeff, uh -huh. Jeff Thorpe, who is a, one Jeff. of my best friends now. Sure. Loved Incredible him. human Love being. Vicious Rumors. He's out in Europe right now crushing it. Good for him. He's got a killer 18-year-old uh, guitar player called oh, nice. Gunnar DeGray. Sick, nice. sick player. Just right out of yeah. high school. Incredible. Good area band. Yeah. Not a thrash band, but still great, no, solid yeah. area band. Every guitar player, good yep. singers, yep. good guitar players have come from yeah, that band. Yeah, he knows what he knows what he's doing Steve there. Steve Smythe. I mean, sure. you name it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Dude. You can name, you can go down the Freaking list. Freaking Carl Albert. Carl was Fucking one of the Mark best McGee. Sure. Wizard yeah. guitar player. Yeah. Anyway, any, from then, um, I did that album. I did the first one with them, which was called Warball. And uh, I met a gentleman by the name of, um, um, what was his name? What's his name? Shit. Cut. <laughs> uh, what the I'll fuck is a guitar this. player fucking so from? This, and then what you can do is you can go, um, 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 when you pick it back up. Brad Gillis. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and just pick it back up. There was another guitar player named Brad Gillis, and he'll just splice okay. it together. Yep. So yeah, and then I met this guitar player when I was doing the Vicious Rumors record, you know, Brad Gillis. You probably all know him from uh, Speak of the Devil. Night Ranger. Night mm -hmm. Ranger. Yes, yeah, sure. And he came in and he did three or four solos on that, that album. And when he came in to do the solos, like, the record was pretty much mixed. So, you know, he just, he's at the last minute. He wasn't going to make come in, you know, and finally he's, oh, I'm ready. So he came in. And when he came in, the record was pretty much mixed. So he got to do his solos over, like, a nice mix, you know, and he was, like, kind of impressed and he was like, Hey man, we just finished recording the uh, Night Ranger record, and man, maybe we should have you mix a song. And I was like, "Fuck yeah, you know, let's do it." And I did, and I'm thinking to myself, "Yeah, right." He was just blowing smoke up my ass or whatever, you know. Four months later, I get a call. I was in Tahoe. I remember it, and he's like, "Hey man, the song's ready. We're gonna send it to you." So one song, or you did the one whole song first. Really, one so song first to see if I could get the record. So check it. So it was like a trial. What did mix. that feel like? I mean, you went from a basically recording nobody to rob flynn now you're I know. doing stuff like brad gillis and now you're doing night ranger what was I that know. like and i was like oh bad i better set my game up and each one made me set my game up like really so, well yeah. obviously yeah sure like like i learned a lot of guitar stuff from vicious rumors i learned a lot of vocal stuff from working with night ranger like harmonies and how to mix and double them and produce the harmonies and vocals and stuff like that like that's that's you know jack blades and Sure. Those guys, I mean, just master musicians, dude. So I did that. So I, I was in Tahoe. He's like, "Hey, you want to mix that song?" And I remember I had my week. I was gonna. It was a Friday, and I was gonna be there until Sunday. And I, I couldn't. I couldn't stay there. I got into my car in the morning on Saturday. I'm like, "Have fun, hon. I'm going back home. <laughs> I'm gonna gotta mix this song, you know, because I was. I only had. I was gonna take two, three days to mix it instead of one, 
when they thought I was taking one day. Uh -huh. So, because I wanted to make sure it was killer. So sure. I went down there and I just mixed it for three days until I thought it was amazing. Sent it. They were like blown away. They sent me the rest of the songs and ended up mixing the whole record. And then during that record, he's all, man, this turned out so killer. He's all, Jack said this to me, Jack Blaze. He's all, I'm doing Brad, I'm doing the uh, the um, Ted Nugent record. You want to mix it? And I'm like, sure. Was it Damn Yankees or just the Ted Nugent no, album? No, the Ted Nugent, a brand new one. It was called, uh, ended up being called uh, Love Grenade. And oh, I like that record. It was like 2006 yeah. or seven. Yeah. I had watched, a cool song in it called Girl Scout Cookies. I watch uh, Spirit of the Wild. I've actually talked about it on the vault before i'm a big ted nugent supporter so i love that ted. must have been so awesome to work with ted him. oh you'll never get a guy that doesn't ever hold back his tongue not even for one uh, second I, can, I mean he can be in that's front of why the I watch pope. It. it's the greatest he can be in front of the pope and he'll tell the pope whatever he needs to tell him well, like in exodus like, in 1990 we did an album called impact is imminent and a lot of the uh, other you know countries like say in japan it's more expensive to buy a cd there so you have to have b-sides for every release that you have in japan you know that There's oh yeah the extra they do copies. that they make you do extra record yeah. exactly yeah, and so cool. we did free for all by ted nugent oh. and he knew it and he actually commented on it and i think he, he was you a love ted nugent. Player, i think I we were listening nugent. to ted nugent the yeah other day. remember that I, yeah. I talk about him all the time here because I'm said so, uh, I love Ted so bad. All the way to and, Metal uh, Legions, you're playing it. Yeah, I love exactly because yeah. I love terrible Ted. I love the whole approach. I love the. Attitude. I'm waiting for him to play like something oh, brutal, or whatever. And, and I hear like, you know, I'm like, that's yeah. that's Ted. Yeah, Ted's, <laughs> I love it. Listen to it all the time. So I mean, just to um, just to get to meet somebody like that. Well, you know, well, well, did you get to meet him? Did you get to? Well, meet they're like, you want to mix a record? I'm like, yeah. And then he's like, and then, and then like a couple months later, he does. He's all okay. We're done. I need you to come up to my ranch. He lived in Santa Rosa at the time. I think he sold that now. Beautiful ranch overlooking like all the wine, wine here, just, just for miles. All you can see is just grapes. He had like a little beautiful house, and then in the back he had this uh, barn that he had converted to a sick studio. Went in there, played me all the tracks. Like, I think we recorded like a solo or something that didn't sound good, I heard. And I'm like, you want to do another pass? And he's like, I actually got to record Ted on two, two solos, I think, wow. for that record. I was like, sick. And then, I, and then I took it home, but I met him, you know, and he was really funny. He like pulled out a huge knife and he had a gun with him. And I'm like, how did you get that on the plane? He's like, I'm a deputy sheriff. Of course, he has to hand it over to the, to the guy in the front. For sure. But uh, they, he, he's allowed to bring that shit around. It's crazy. He doesn't mind whipping it out, too. It's showing you. <laughs> That's amazing. So then you, um, so you've worked with a ton of Bay Area bands as well. Oh, yeah. Which, tell me all the metal, the, the metal bands you were. I mean, I know you worked with Exodus. Okay, yeah. Exodus was great, man. One day I get a call from Dirter. He's just like, hey, man, we need to do the Exodus record. Tom's out. He's taking a little sabbatical. And um, we're going to be using uh, Paul Bostoff on drums. And, uh, oh, by the way, new singer, too, and guitar player. <laughs> yeah, it was basically I was like, just, I get to do X. It was basically uh, Gary <laughs> Jack and Rob and Paul and Lee. Exactly. Actually. But, it, you know, it, um, I think pretty much that uh, Gary wrote every little lick and rhythm. I, and I think he did, too. So it's pure exodus, you know, and whatever Definitely. form, you know. So we did that. That was amazing, you know, like working with Gary and how quick and precise you know, his rhythm hand is and how pro he, definitely he is. knows what he wants when he's in the studio. Oh, man. He, he really does. And that's, that's what I love about working with He's been doing it forever. I mean, my first record. You know what? More than any band that I ever work with, I got to say, when Exodus goes into the studio, 